I just am really frustrated by him representing this as if like, and like me and, and Sutton are so much better. Like, no, you're not. Okay, hi everybody. Thanks for coming back if you've been here before or hi, welcome. If you're new, my name is Mickey, I'm a therapist and we talk about therapy things on this channel. Today we are talking about Nate and Sutton again. They put up a video a little while ago that is called Uncomfortable Questions to Deepen Relationships. And I don't know about you, but I am just dying to know what Nate and Sutton think is important or necessary uh, in their relationships and in marriage because their parenting advice really hit it out of the park. So we're talking about that today. Before we get into it, I I want to give a quick disclaimer that I give on all of these fundy videos that we are talking about this couple specifically, but about Christian fundamentalism today, because this take uh, is not reflective of what regular Christian or regular religious people think. Um, and that distinction is really important. It is entirely possible to have a relationship with a deity or with religion or spirituality that's positive and that's healthy and that uplifts your mental health. This is not that. And so we're talking about it because the advice that they share is detrimental to people's health and safety, their mental mental health. Um, and then they hide behind this excuse of like, I'm a Christian. And so therefore you cannot critique me, which sucks. So, uh, we're talking about that today. I have not watched this video, so we're all going to be in for a surprise together. So let's get into the video. Also as a quick disclaimer, just for me, um, I did have surgery a couple of weeks ago and I am, um, off of caffeine right now also. So if I seem a little low energy, it's because I'm going through it. So, um, that's that. I promise I'm still excited uh, and happy to make you content. Um, but my body is going through it. So that's that. Okay, let's watch this video. What's up guys? Nate and Sutton back with another video. And today we are talking about what? We are talking about questions that you can ask to form a deeper connection with your friends. So me and Sutton, there's something that you should know about us. We, we like to dive beneath the surface. We like to go deep. And people like to tell us things. We've had like total strangers just telling us deep things about their life that they probably haven't told anyone else. Yeah, it's actually kind of a problem. Um, me, we went to the beach this past weekend with Paul and Morgan and we were telling them, they're like, we were like, hey, just so you know, me and Sutton tend to have this effect on people <laughs> where they just like to talk our heads off. You know, and I think, and it's really awesome because people like to share their life stories with us and me and Sutton just, I think, are good listeners. But I think there's a reason and one of the main reasons is the questions that we ask. Yes, and he has not always been good at asking questions. On our first date, he didn't hardly ask me anything. And I'm telling him, I'm like, the minimum you can do is just say, what about you? Whenever I ask him something. So he's come a very long way. And now he's really good at the question. Sutton is kind of the queen leader when it comes to this question. And she taught me the way. She did. She showed me the light. And so we're here to share with you guys today just some basic, applicable questions that you can start implementing into your relationships that really are gonna i believe take them to the next level and make your conversations much more exciting you know it's okay hold on really quick i just want to address that the resentment is just oozing out of these people i don't know if we talked about this in the first video i made about nate and sutton but it seems increasingly obvious in the way that they communicate with each other and especially like the cuts in their videos that their communication with one another is like strained at best a lot of times when they're on camera. And I don't know, maybe it's just because they don't like being on camera. They've made less and, or yeah, made fewer and fewer videos uh, as time has gone on. And so, I don't know, maybe they're just uncomfortable. Maybe they're just awkward. But I do think that that's worth noting because again, we've talked ad nauseum about how when folks are on the internet saying, you should take my advice, as a consumer, it's really important to be asking yourself, like, what benefit does this person <laughs> receive from me engaging with their content or me taking their word as gospel, right? It's really important that especially like in the digital age where misinformation and disinformation are everywhere, that we be discerning, right? That we're like careful about just taking people's advice or what people say as being factual, not only because people benefit from spreading, you know, like salacious misinformation because it gets them clicks and views, um, but also because there is an increasing number of people who represent themselves as experts in things and aren't actually experts um, or, you know, maybe are an expert, but not um, in the way that they say they are, or they have like shitty motives for making the content that they do. So just for what it's worth, again, people who 
these people who want you to believe that like they have the answers for how to deepen relationships. It's a little odd that they seem to have so much content for or, um, resentment, I mean, for one another. Before we talk more about that, I wanna pause and say thank you to this week's sponsor, which is Beducated. I have partnered with Beducated before and I love them. For those of you who don't know, Beducated is an online platform that is dedicated to sexual relationship and uh, intimacy learning. Beducated well and truly has courses for everybody. And when I say everybody, I mean everybody. As a queer, polyamorous, and gender non-conforming weirdo, I feel very at home on the platform. It's wonderfully inclusive, and I have found courses that like specifically relate to my very nuanced situation. I recently took the course called Roadmap to Intimacy, and I loved that they separated out emotional, physical, sensual, and sexual intimacy all into their own categories, and there's like really wonderful learning about all of those four categories. Personally, I'm of the mind that especially in regards to relationships, either with ourselves or with other people, there's always more to learn, and so it's just really refreshing to find that Beducated's course catalog is always evolving and there's always new stuff that I'm like, mm, I need to watch that. Normally I am super excited to partner with Beducated, but today I am extra especially excited to partner with Beducated because it's Black Friday and there's a special Black Friday deal going on right now where you can join and get the annual pass for 60% off and that rate is locked in for life. So if you've been on the fence about Beducated and you're like, mm, I don't know, go click the link, get your annual pass for 60% off because that rate will be locked in for life and it cannot be understated overstated how excited I am. Beducated also has a 14 day money back guarantee and a one day free trial. So there is genuinely no risk involved. And I personally am very excited to have my annual pass rate locked in at $6.66 per month. So go click the link, show Beducated some love for showing me some love. Um, and let's go ahead and hop back into the video. It's fun to have deep conversations. Yes, and my parents always taught me you should always <laughs> leave a conversation knowing more about them than they know about you. Shout out at advice with dad. Advice from dad. Advice from dad. <laughs> All right, guys, so let's get into it. Question. I'm really not trying to make this video super long, but just like, listen, is this terrible advice? No, but is this like a good norm to set up? Not exactly. Like this attitude that we should be happy to receive less in relationships is really common in these like fundamentalist circles, but is also just like super shitty. Like that's not fair. If you consistently find yourself on the receiving end of like half-assed friendship or like in a romantic relationship also, like that's a red flag, right? I don't know if this video will be up yet, but we talked about um, how to make friends and there's a part two to that video um, where I talk about how um, a useful piece of advice is that if you wanna be interesting, to be interested, right? Like care about what other people uh, think or want or need, um, what people, you know, like do in their life, ask them questions about themselves. This is a great way to keep conversations moving. Um, but if you consistently find yourself on the receiving end of this, like that's not a great place to be. Ideally, healthy, happy relationships are two people who have a genuine desire and interest in knowing one another, right? Like this idea that you should just constantly be on the receiving end of like a lack of interest from the other person is a problematic norm to set up. Number one. What is one thing that you wouldn't want to share with me? Or wouldn't want me to know about you? Diving deep on the first I mean, question. just like, boom. Can you imagine asking your friend that? And Why would you ask I really, that? Uh, the best way to go about doing this is actually leading by example. So you might first share something with them that is really hard for you to share with them. And this does a lot. Yeah, this is an opportunity to get to know them better and also for growth. Like if something, you know, what you have to share could be a conviction. Like mm -hmm. if you were telling a confession, them. confession, even. Yeah, if you were telling them like, I slipped up and I've been watching porn for the past five months, then now all of a sudden you have someone to confide in. You may have a new accountability partner. It could lead to some really cool conversations. Can you imagine just like getting coffee casually with your friend? And they're like, I have to confess to you that I can't stop watching porn. Just like, somebody make it stop. <laughs> I, woo, I knew that this video was gonna be weird, but I didn't think that it would be this entertaining, honestly. <laughs> Listen. 
there is a time and a place and there is something to be said for vulnerability in relationships. I am a fangirl, well, maybe not a fangirl, but I'm generally a p positive endorser of Brene Brown's content and like her vulnerability talks and things like that. And it's valuable to be able to be honest and truthful about where we're at, our thoughts, our feelings, our struggles with our friends. But the thing that I struggle with about these types of videos, it's the same problem that all of the Girl Defined questionnaires have about like, like 136 questions to ask on your first date or whatever. It's this forced and coerced vulnerability and intimacy that first of all, it reads as really phony, but second of all, feels more like an interrogation than it does a genuine development of trust and, and interest, right? I understand that what they're getting at is that in order to deepen friendships, we need to include vulnerability, but just give that advice then, right? <laughs> prompting people with these like question and response type scenarios. Again, first of all, it's not gonna lend itself to actual vulnerability. Cause again, just imagine that you're like, hey, what are you doing on Tuesday? You wanna get coffee? Like, yeah. And then they're like, so what's one thing that you hate about yourself? <laughs> like, that's so aggressive. I just really wanna discourage people from doing this because also I think the subtext here is that in order to deepen relationships, you have to be like forcing it and like ideally in a healthy relationship, trust is going to develop naturally as we share experiences with one another, we share small bits of vulnerability with one another. That adds up to a larger picture where like, hey, you know, you can say like, hey, do you wanna go get coffee? Like I've kind of been struggling and I could really use some support. Or like if you just have mental space or emotional space, I would really like appreciate a shoulder to lean on, you know? Um, first of all, cause then the person knows <laughs> that something heavy is gonna come up. Um, but second of all, because when we have that gradual building of trust, it doesn't come across as though you're being interrogated. Um, and rather this is an experience where you two get to share and support and be in emotional and, um, like closeness with one another without it feeling manufactured. This is just like such a weird, weird premise. Absolutely. Um, and you know, we are called to confess our sins to one another. And if you have a sin, maybe, maybe you have some anger towards the person or maybe you're jealous of them or whatever it might be. This is just a Terrible great way advice. to dive deep, lead by example. And I've done this many times in my life and it's usually really uncomfortable. Uh, but it also usually leads to really deep, meaningful relationships and a very interesting conversation. Yeah, I feel like all these questions are kind of from the verse of iron sharpens iron. So we're trying to give you some questions to ask your friends to just sharpen each other up. Absolutely. If you ever have... This is super weird. The other thing about this that I find really odd is that this advice is coming from the lens of like, you can ask your friends this, you can ask your significant other this, but you could also be asking strangers these questions, which is not appropriate. I just wanna be super clear because also too, this is a genuine struggle, especially for folks who are autistic or folks who have um, like social anxiety or just like difficulties with relationships. Um, this could be like a genuine ignorance on behalf of somebody and that's not um, immoral or bad or shameful or wrong. And so I just wanna be super clear, don't fucking take advice like this. There's a lot of advice that exists on the internet about like, how do I make friends or how do I like better my relationships and stuff. And so I just wanna be super clear that if you're, if the advice that someone is trying to sell you is that you have to manufacture friendships in this way, then it's bad advice. The truth about healthy relationships is that again, they will develop gradually over time, but also that it shouldn't feel like an uphill trudge through quicksand to get there. If we're having to try this hard at a relationship, regardless of what your affinity is for social interaction, that's not a fucking good sign, right? Like even for those of us who do have a difficulty with social anxiety or social interaction or whatever, it shouldn't feel like we have to constantly be thinking of how to make this person like us or to be closer to us or to be interesting or make this relationship better. And also don't ask strangers these questions. <laughs> right? Like this is not the way, like if you just come right out of the gate asking a per perfect stranger, uh, like what's one of your deepest, darkest secrets, it's not going to get you anywhere good. And likely that person will probably never talk to you again. And for good reason, that's like very much a boundary violation when you don't know someone well. So the next one is what has been your most consuming thought lately? So something that's been constantly on their mind. This is a great way to just get to know them in the present. Like what are they dealing with? What are they thinking about? and you can listen for ways that you might can help them through it. I love this one because what I have found in most conversations, people are always talking about like things that they've gone through or things that are about to happen. It's like consumed by the past or the future. 
But what rarely people talk about is the present. What are they dealing with right now? What's been going on in their lives right now, their minds, their hearts that are consuming them? And that's something that um, you can really tell a lot about what a person is going through. Is what so not only does Nate want to encourage you to ask really deeply personal and invasive questions, uh, but he also wants you to critique what their answer is to the question. There is such a weird aura about this couple generally, but especially about Nate and like the way that he seems to approach content creation that I just really don't resonate with. And I don't understand, like, what is the goal of making this video? Like, so you want to give people these questions, but then also talk about what, how much better you are than other people? Because surely Nate is never consumed by things that have happened in the past or things that might happen in the future. I just want to be super clear. Besides the fact that this question is really invasive, and I do want to discourage people again from asking these very manufactured and invasive questions as a means of trying to force intimacy in a relationship, this judgment about people being consumed by things in the past or in the future is very normal. This is very much a human thing. I can vouch for this as a clinician, that this happens a lot. Anxiety is a very necessary function of human evolution. The truth is that we obviously need to be afraid of some things <laughs> because it keeps us safe. Like we are wired, our brain is wired in such a way that it wants to help us avoid danger. And so having some level of anxiety about some things is very normal. Um, and also something that we shouldn't strive to eradicate from your body. But beyond that, experiencing like clinically significant anxiety that needs to be treated by like a therapist or medication or whatever is also very common, right? Like it's sometimes a very painful experience and I don't wanna be like, everyone should feel that way because that's not helpful. But if you do experience anxiety or you struggle with rumination about things that have happened in the past, or things that might happen in the future, please know that you're not like a subpar human. This is just such a shitty and judgmental take. And also, again, I just wanna be super clear that this happens a lot. This is very normal, this is very common. This is not a thing that like only happens to a very small group of select weirdos. Like th this is a shared human experience. I just am really frustrated by him representing this as if like, like me and, and Sutton are so much better. Like, no, you're not. Everybody experiences anxiety sometimes, and that's okay. What are they thinking about currently? Yeah, and it could be something good. And if it is something really good that's been consuming their mind, this is your chance to celebrate them. I feel like that's what makes such a great friend is someone that can celebrate you and your moments that are big yes. for you. Yes, come on. Okay, but why don't you just ask like, hey, has anything cool happened, right? Any good news? I ask my friends all the time, anything new or noteworthy? Like... You can just ask that, right? And also if there's something that's on somebody's mind or you know that someone's struggling, you can be like, hey, can I support you? Is there anything that you wanna talk about? Like I've got space, so if you wanna talk, I'm here. That's a much less invasive way of speaking to your friends and being like, what's consuming your thoughts? Just like, it's so weird. Ugh. Isn't that rare? So Sadly. rare, so rare. When's the last time someone celebrated you? I hope it hasn't been too long. Get better me, friends, y'all. I feel like no one celebrates me. <laughs> See? <laughs> I do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do a good job. But I you mean, see? me and something talk about this a lot. Not that we need to be like praised or anything to feel good about ourselves. But I think it is a sign of a strong friendship relationship when you have someone who can These just genuinely people. celebrate with you and your wins, you know? Um, it also shows that they're strong as a person because I feel like it's the week that when you tell them something really exciting about you and they start to flip it around to be about them or thinking about themselves like, oh, well, that didn't happen for me. You know, you need a good, strong friend that's going to be with you and celebrate you. Yes, absolutely. All right, number another three. another awkward one. Yeah, this one you might have to use a little discernment with. but I don't think I've ever asked any of these questions. Question. Have you? Um, I think I have maybe not these exact words, but I feel like I've, I've definitely had this conversation before. Whew. And the question is, is there something that I do that gets on your nerves? Or maybe like a better, you could phrase it in a different way of like, is there something that I could do to be a better friend, even carry over to marriage, better husband, better wife? Um, we'll make a whole other video about that. Yeah, what, what am I doing that I could do better? Okay. Like I said, uh, this, one, this one could hurt a little bit, you know? You might want to be prepared to get a little wounded, but it's for the greater good. 
Okay, this question is where the iron sharpens iron really. I love that they're just like not in <laughs> elaborating on that at all. I wanna be super clear. If you're gonna ask this question, first of all, you need to be very prepared for an answer that will like probably really hurt your feelings. So don't ask that question lightly. But also again, this just comes off as really invasive and odd, right? Like. Personally, I think people would be much better suited to doing the work on themselves to feel comfortable to navigate conflict effectively, right? Asking this question out of the blue of like, hey, do I irritate you? Is there anything that I should change? Am I a bad friend? It's like a really weird vibe. But if we rather focus that energy on being comfortable enough with ourselves and regulating our emotions effectively enough that we can walk through a conflict and genuinely hear the feedback that folks are trying to give us when we do fuck shit up, you're much better served. I think that relationship is going to be much better served because oftentimes folks, first of all, they're going to be off put, but you just randomly asking this question. But second of all, they might not have anything just like off the cuff, like rarely if ever. <laughs> Do people just walk around with their deep-seated resentments about their friends at the forefront of their mind? If they do, that's a different issue, I think. And so like, again, I just, I really fail to see the benefit of this. And I just personally think people's time could be better spent, um, again, like learning how to model appropriate accountability and like conflict resolution. It comes into play. So the question is, is there something that you see me doing that could potentially be hurting my relationship with God? So no. say that you, are a big cusser or something and your friend could tell you, maybe they feel uncomfortable telling you, hey, I wish you would stop cussing. But when you're straight up asking them, what am I doing that can hurt my relationship? That opens the door for them to be like, well, you know, I have noticed that you cuss a lot. Maybe you could cut back on that or you drink a lot. Maybe you shouldn't do that or whatever it is. Yeah, you might be surprised how many things people are wanting to tell you, but maybe they just don't feel like they have the freedom to tell you. And this one really opens the door for that. So, I mean, who wouldn't? Again, with the manufactured intimacy. First of all, I want to point out in a relationship where we genuinely have some level of emotional intimacy and safety in vulnerability, that someone who notices an obvious behavior from the outside that's harmful to you either in your relationship with your deity or to yourself, they would feel comfortable to voice that or to step in at some point and be like, hey, like I love you, but have you thought about your relationship to alcohol, right? Like this is maybe not a healthy thing. That conversation, if the only way that your friend is going to feel comfortable to bring that up to you is if you point blank ask them, hey, is there anything that I'm doing that's really problematic? <laughs> then like that doesn't speak highly of the level of relationship or intimacy in the relationship. And like, I think then it begs the question whether this is a conversation that you two need to be having at all. Because A, if we don't have the vulnerability and the intimacy to ask that question in the first place, do we have the vulnerability and the safety and the intimacy to have a conversation about that issue productively? and safely then? From my perspective as a clinician, probably fucking not. I just really am confused and annoyed by this perspective that like, first of all, these people are experts about how to deepen your relationships, but second of all, that they're giving people advice that's like the opposite of fucking helpful. Like this issue is not a particularly difficult one to tackle in my opinion. Lots of people who are uncredentialed or, you know, who are like laymen give advice about like, this is something that helped me deepen my relationships, right? And like, usually it's not like, the best, but this is like penalty box bad. And I just am so confused by this advice. Let's just keep going. Want to grow closer to God. And a lot of times people can see something that you can't. So it's really a great way. Uh, if you're just genuinely seeking God and growing closer to him, this is a great question to ask people that are closest to you. Next question. How is your walk with God currently? Another good present moment answer and this is a good question because if you meet up with this friend once a month or however often every time you ask it could be a new answer so this is like this is the only one that hasn't felt aggressively invasive thus far this is not particularly relevant to the content that we discuss on the channel because like i'm not religious right we don't really talk about religion here other than for people who are fundamentalist and like uh sharing really terrible advice so we're just gonna fast forward past this one yeah and it is important to also be present you know when you're meeting up with your friends Put your phone away. Yeah. Be present and talk about the present. <laughs> yeah, if you're so looking at your phone take. when people are talking to you, you got bigger problems. No, I'd love to make another video about that. Yeah, there's nothing that makes me feel more 
unimportant or like you don't care what I'm saying, then you looking at your phone. <laughs> and it's one thing. I mean, you know, sometimes things come up. Someone calls you. Immediate text needs to be answered. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, but oh no! Yes. Listen, I'm the last person to be like body language is a surefire way to know how people feel. But her facial expressions throughout this video really don't seem to lend themselves to like feeling seen or heard in her relationship. And especially this like, nothing bothers me more than when you look at your phone. <laughs> it's like really a choice. And then the eye roll when he says, oh, you know, sometimes things come up, like it's unavoidable. <laughs> like this is just, this is all bad. Yeah, if you're consistently looking at your phone when someone's talking to you and that's an issue. And also I invite you, if you have a close friend that looks at their phone a lot when you're talking to them, I encourage you to bring that up, you know? Cause mm -hmm. I don't know who that doesn't bother. Yeah, I guess. Listen, the advice of like be present, try not to look at your phone when you're talking to someone, sure, fair. I do however just wanna point out that there are very much people in the world who won't be bothered by this. And like, especially if you have that mutual understanding with your friend or in your relationship, that's not bad, right? Especially for neurodivergent people, especially for people who struggle with eye contact, there's nothing wrong with not making eye contact or not, you know, staring deeply at each other when you're having a conversation. Sometimes that's just the norm of the relationship. And like, we really should just be empowering people to form relationships in whatever way makes the most sense and feels best for all of the participants involved Involved, right? It's one thing to say, like, make sure that you're not ignoring your friends or like being a dick to your friends. But like, again, I just, I want to normalize it. Like this is a very neurotypical take and just like, I don't love that. People that do it. <laughs> All right. The next one is in what area of your life would you say you could use the most growth in and which area of life do you feel like you are excelling in? Is this a job interview? It really feels like a job interview. I just want to be super clear. Lots of people are going to approach relationships in different ways. We literally just talked about that, right? And so like if you and your friends or your family feel most comfortable and safe by having interview style questions, that's none of my business. But I do just want to be super clear. That's not the norm. Like rarely if ever is this tact going to go the distance in terms of like, especially in developing new relationships, this is really not the best advice. I just, whatever. We made a series of videos about how to make friends or like how to find friends or deepen uh, friendships and things like that. Um, I'll link both of those if they're up by this time, but if not, I'll link the first one um, up here. There's just so much wonderful advice on the internet about relationships and friendships that doesn't come across as this very like, it's such a Christian fundamentalist thing. The like manualized instruction book type of questions uh, to make friends and to like, if you answer all 136 questions, <laughs> then you'll know exactly whether this person should be your fiance or your best friend or whatever. Like this is not how human nature works. <laughs> there, there is a whole host of complexity in terms of relationships that I would encourage people to find. And, and this is like really not that. So I think that's enough. There's like, to a minute, there's one minute left of this video. Um, and I have a feeling it's probably gonna be mostly outro. So uh, we're gonna call it there, but <laughs> I am just weirded out and confused. Um, at least Nate and Sutton's advice this time didn't include hitting the shit out of people that you supposedly love. So like the bar is in hell, but you know, um, that's an improvement from last time. So that was an adventure for us all. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like the video, like the video. Don't forget to go get that 60% off the annual pass deal because that's a good one. Um, subscribe to the channel if you like it here. We make content like this uh, in an educational moment every now and again, so I'd love to have you stay for that. And then share the video to help the channel grow and to help it to grow. And I will see you guys next Saturday. Okay, bye. You did it.